What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. Now Samsung's goal with this tablet was to make the best tablet that money can buy, but did they actually succeed? We're gonna take a detailed look. Now I've included timestamps down below if you want to skip around. And I also wanna mention upfront that this video is sponsored by Best Buy. They did send me the tablet and asked me to talk about it, but I am allowed to give you my honest and true opinion providing the pros and cons of the device. But I just want to make sure everyone out there knows that this content is sponsored by Best Buy. And I also want to mention that I have been buying my tech from Best Buy for many years because they have an excellent return policy. And I have also recommended Best Buy to friends and family way before they ever sponsored any of my content. Now, if you do decide that this tablet is the one for you, you can help support my channel as well as my sponsor, Best Buy, if you use the link in the video description down below to make your purchase. Without further ado, let's get right into this review and talk about the technical specs of the Galaxy S8 Ultra tablet. Now this monster tablet features a 14.6 inch 16 by 10 AMOLED 2960 by 1848 pixel. So this is also a 120 Hertz display for snappy and fluid animations. And I gotta say actually using the device has been very snappy and responsive experience two giant thumbs up in that department. Now it comes with an eight core Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. This is gonna provide plenty of performance for doing just about anything you would normally do on a tablet. Now, depending on which version of the Galaxy S8 Ultra you buy, you'll get either eight, 12, or 16 gigs of RAM and you'll get 128, 256, or 512 gigs of storage. But you do also have a micro SD card slot, which is nice. You get an 11,200 mAh battery. Now that's a very large battery, but it's also a very big display. I was typically getting about six to eight hours of heavy use, depending on what kind of brightness and what I'm actually doing on the tablet. It's certainly possible to kill it a bit quicker than six hours or get a bit more than eight hours, depending on if you're doing something really, really heavy, like 3D gaming, or you're doing something very light like editing a Word document. Now it comes with the latest connectivity technology with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2, and it comes with an S Pen stylus. You don't have to pay anything extra to get that stylus. Now, depending on which model you get, it'll cost $10.99 to $13.99. So this tablet certainly has a very expensive starting price. Now the detachable backlit keyboard has a touchpad, but this whole keyboard kickstand setup is gonna run you $350. Now I haven't been been able to test out this extra keyboard cover, but from the user reviews that I've seen at launch here, there has been some technical glitches, double keystrokes, or the touchpad not being as responsive as desired. Like it tends to go to sleep and then you have to wake it up regularly, which is not an ideal experience if you're trying to use the tablet like a laptop. Now Samsung's charging $350 for this keyboard stand, probably because that's what Apple has historically charged. Now at $350, this seems overpriced to me. I would have much rather seen this keyboard accessory be added on for maybe $200 or maybe $250 instead, especially when there are cases with kickstands and alternative keyboards that cost a lot less. So let's talk about the ergonomics of this massive tablet. How is it actually to use the device? Now, at 14.6 inches, this tablet features an enormous yet surprisingly ergonomic feel because of its thin profile and light 1.6 pound weight. Now, if you add a huge bulky case to this, it may not become quite as ergonomic, so keep that in mind. Overall, I didn't have any problems using the tablet for long periods of time, especially if I can hold it with two hands or I'm resting the tablet vertically on my chest. And I actually really, really loved using the tablet while laying down on the couch or in bed because I, I'm really tired of my neck being strained looking down at my smartphone because I don't want to hold my smartphone above my head when I'm laying down and then I end up putting it on my chest and then it ends up hurting the back of my neck. But with this tablet, it's such a better experience reading and watching things, especially if you can use the top half of the tablet because the display is so large. That said, the tablet is so sleek that you'll definitely want to be careful when handling it so that you don't bend it. Obviously don't sit on the tablet. I don't think this tablet would like that. So you'll want to handle this tablet with care. Now the quad speakers are loud and clear and they're definitely better than my 11 inch iPad Pro that I've been using as a tablet, but I wouldn't say they're quite as good as the 12.9 inch 
iPad Pro, mainly because they don't quite have as much bass and fullness to the sound. Now, as expected, this tablet is super fast and responsive, allowing you to do multitasking, split screen, side by side, utilize Samsung DeX for a more laptop-like experience. And this tablet is capable of getting just about anything done that you need to do, though it may take a bit longer than a full-size PC, or it may not be possible at all if certain applications are only available on PC, Mac, or iOS. So you'll definitely want to keep in mind which apps you're going to need to use if you buy this tablet and verify that they're available on the Android interface or find some replacement app that you can use instead. Now I spent some time utilizing Samsung DeX and I got to say I was very impressed overall with the user experience. It's a very laptop-like experience or very Chromebook-like experience, allowing you to utilize Windows side-by-side, -side, do file management, and Alt-Tab to quick switch between different tasks. Now, if Samsung DeX can't utilize the app you're looking for, you may be able to use something called Second Screen. Second Screen utilizes Bluetooth to pair to a PC to extend your full laptop or desktop display to the tablet interface. This is gonna let you use your computer to the fullest extent while utilizing your tablet at the same time. Now there's clearly some compression and a slight delay when using second screen, but it is pretty minimal and overall very responsive, but just don't expect to do like full PC gaming and stuff like that and you'll be good to go. Now, artists can use the stylus of the tablet in drawing applications with second screen. Now, I'm not a professional artist, so I can't really give that kind of insight on whether you can use this tablet for professional art, but I have watched some reviews of some professional artists using the tablet to draw, and they seem to be pretty impressed with it. Now I realize that using cameras on a tablet in like some concert or something has become a meme, but the cameras on this tablet are actually really good. The rear cameras and the front cameras can both do 4K 30 frames per second video. And if you need a high quality webcam for photos and video calls, then this is gonna be a great overall tablet experience, especially since when it's on its side, that webcam is at the top. This is the front facing wide angle camera. Now it looks pretty good above average for a front facing camera, but not amazing. Switch to the standard angle, this is noticeably improved and I can see a lot more detail. It looks very, very good. Now there is a small notch in the display, but it's pretty hard for me to notice, honestly, because it is a very large display, but the notch may bother some users out there. Now this tablet is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but at the same time, you're getting tremendous functionality. You know, this tablet is excellent for some lightweight gaming, reading, productivity, consuming different kinds of content, taking photos, capturing some videos, editing those videos or photos, rendering that content out. Now I've used this tablet in all kinds of situations. I've taken it to cafes. I've used it on my elliptical while working out. It works fantastic. Now since using the tablet a little over a week ago, I've already read eight volumes of the Invincible comic book. It really has revitalized my love of comics because it is just so much more enjoyable using the 120 hertz AMOLED display with just a high level of brightness, great color, having an ultra large tablet display is a very immersive experience for enjoying things like comics and other types of art. Now, whether you should pick the S8 Ultra over the competition will likely depend on if you already have an Android phone in your pocket. If you do, then this tablet is the clear winner in my book. If you are an iPhone user, then this tablet will still provide a great experience in many ways, but just don't expect a fully integrated experience between your smartphone and tablet. If you're in the market for a premium, high-end, large tablet experience, I can highly recommend picking up the Galaxy S8 Ultra. Now, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Huzzah. Oh,